Alex, drug addict, yeah, because but that was the easiest way to get money a few years ago, you know, you, if you had a real problem, people was just not willing to help you, so I yeah. do remember that part of it, yeah. Yeah. So being a drug addict or an alcoholic sort of enabled you to get help and it never made any sense to me because I see people that just really, really need help and get back to what you were saying, you were just hungry, you know. So, so when, uh, here's a story for you, there was a, a young lady, she had went to a dentist and um, they pulled a tooth or something and she went uh, to one of the, what do you call it, uh, department stores. And uh, she thought she was shopping, and she just started putting things, taking things off the shelf and putting it in her purse. And they said, what are you doing? And she says, well, what, I'm shopping. What else would I be doing? Because she had just, you know, they had given her a shot. And, you know, they arrested her for shoplifting and everything. And so sometimes when there is a problem, people don't stop to ask, you know, why are you doing this? Oh, I got chased by the cops after I robbed the Denny's, and they pepper sprayed me. I think that's why, because my face is all puffy now mm -hmm. and stuff, but I'm not going to sue because I was in the wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't believe in lawsuits, although, however, I think there's a lawsuit going on. Right now, because in Arizona, I got mad. I was, um, I was sent to Mexico because my, whenever my mom had problems with her kids, she always sent them to her Aunt Loli. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Anyways, uh, they didn't like me there because mm -hmm. they didn't understand. They thought that I was a burden to them, especially to my cousins. They didn't understand, so I ran away to Tucson. And um, I went, I walked about five miles to um, St. Mary's, mm -hmm. and they treated me very well there. We had exercises and everything. It was a great hospital. Anyways, um, I uh, left there, and then I met up with a guy there who wasn't very good. And um, he, stole, he stole money from me. I made him my payee, and we were going to get married and all this stuff. But he was sick, mm -hmm. and he was doing heroin. And... I found this out by another guy that I was seeing. I mean, another guy, a friend of his. We don't want to confuse you here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know. It's confusing. It is confusing. Anyways, um, I got beat up by five sheriffs mm -hmm. because I was walking after I went to jail for busting a um, bottle. I have a, I have a real anger problem. I had a real mm -hmm. anger problem, but I'm docile now. Anyways. I um It's okay. I can, I can I can take it from here for a minute. Uh mainly one one of the reasons um one of the reasons they uh, we we talking about this what I'm leading up to eventually is that when when people uh, encounter a person with an illness on a street or in a store instead of just a freak out or whatever and and when a person gets paranoid, you know, you, you don't know what to do and you just come out swinging, so to speak, because you just feel like you're just caged up and have to protect yourself. And so... Oh, so, that's right. Yeah, see, so, so I they're not really helping. You know, like we, we had a little incident. I had this young, this child with me and he was a little out of the ordinary. And, and you, you wanted to help me, if you remember that? And I said, that's okay, just let me do it. Because I tried to see, uh, I tried to look at it from his little point of view, because when you, when you try to interfere, and you can't get him out of that mindset, and then we would have had a real problem on our hands. So it was just a little problem, you know. Uh, and it was, with children, we can do that. And lots of times we go to the supermarket, and there's kids, and they totally disbehaving and people rolling their eyes. Well, allow that mother to deal with this child the way she sees fit or the way she needs to because she understands, you know? And then now, but then when we grown up and some, something like that comes up, people just don't know how to deal with us. I know, I see my counselors as being my father and my mother mm -hmm. because um, I didn't have a father. As a matter of fact, my mom divorced him when he was nine. 
So I, I miss a male figure. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tend to cling to relationships. Mm -hmm. I become very needy and I need to be around them all the time. But when I'm alone, I can find things to do. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, right now, um, I don't have any family. I rely on friends. Mm -hmm. Friends are my family right now. Mm -hmm. And I rely on my counselor and my nurse mm -hmm. to give me what I need. Mm -hmm. And reassurance, we talk about anything now. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about problems anymore. Mm -hmm. I talk about what I do. Mm -hmm. And um, because I feel like I've been healed. Mm -hmm. But um, I still have bouts. Mm -hmm. But small bouts. I'm doing a lot better mm -hmm. than I was before. Yeah, well, yeah, from where we talked yesterday and the day before, it's like you're at the point where you can actually make plans. You can plan some two or three weeks in advance and follow through with it. Oh, yes. You know? Oh, that's, that's to bring you back to this. I ha so I went to jail because I robbed the Denny's. And um, now I have to wait seven years in order to get a job mm -hmm. because I went to Express Personnel mm -hmm. and they wouldn't give me a job because I had a um, prison record. Mm -hmm. And they have to wait seven years, so I'm applying to at this at this women's center for another job so I can become a caretaker part-time, temporary, mm -hmm. until I go to school, back to school to become an interpreter. And I'm hoping that they'll hire me, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be hard to get a job. It's so hard to get a job in this town because- it's just a vicious circle. You it is. You have to do this in order to do this, and it just goes on So and I'm gonna have to play the waiting game here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all in all, you, you know, you, you, you're doing well, you have a place to live. And, oh, yeah, and, and, and you, my bills are paid, I have a pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so irresponsible with money, though. I spend <laughs> it so quickly. I have a girlfriend, she's irresponsible. Maybe we get her paid, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From where I'm sitting, you're looking pretty good. You're doing a lot of things. So uh, where do you think... You, well, because you can't plan, where do you, where do you think you're going to be two years from now? Can you think that far in advance? Oh, yeah. Oh, good I plan. You. I plan to be in school, mm -hmm. have a job. I wish I could work 24-7. I think I can. But that would wear me out. I know that. Mm -hmm. But, I, I, well, see, everything is riding on the 24th because I'm, mm -hmm. I have a... I have an appointment with the Department of Vocational Rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And um, Chris and Sherry and my counselor, Mike Walson, are going to be there mm -hmm. because um, they're going to send me to a school. Mm -hmm. But I have to get a car because mm -hmm. I may be going to Bates Technical College, which is in Tacoma, and mm -hmm. I'll need a car because um, the bus services, they don't run that. They run, but. Um, I have to get transfers, and it's just so time-consuming, whereas a car could be yeah, so much quicker. Go to Tacoma, yeah. So, um, hopefully, so anyways, the reason why I'm, I'm waiting for my appointment to see the people at the Department of Rehabilitation, or DVR, mm -hmm. um, is because... they'll let me know whether or not employers will need a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. So two years from now, I still may be going to school mm -hmm. and working part time. Yeah, but it's, it's, it sounds like your whole, your, you know, your road from here is gonna be easier than from, you know, where you came, where you started out, so. Oh yeah, yeah at least I used to have time to kill yeah, and you, stuff. You, you are just at least midway here, you know. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, so the 24th is when I'm really hoping to um, get some answers yeah. and to set things rolling for me. Now see, myself, I don't plan anything. I do things spontaneous much better because I'm, I'm a terrible appointment keeper, you know, and I actually, um, I, would, I need somebody to keep track of what day it is. I have at the time I forget, you know, and then the friends, um, and some of the, some of the doctors in places, they really good, they call you. They say, well, you have an appointment tomorrow, don't forget. I, I forgot my appointment with uh, my counselor, and um, I had to be reminded mm -hmm. as to what a time my appointment was going to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, anyways, um, 
Here, my nurse, Kathy Hamilton, wrote it down for me. And um, she um, was nice enough to, to talk to me because she's concerned about my sleeping patterns mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, but some people are day people and some people are night people, you know. I know, just just but I need to function during the day because mm -hmm. at nighttime, there's, you know, this is a small town, Olympia, Lacey, Tumwater, mm -hmm. and I live in Lacey. And um, everything shuts down about 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And that's when I want to talk to friends and stuff like that. But I didn't get no phone calls yesterday because they were all busy. Or um, Yeah, but if you wasn't a night person, I wouldn't have anybody to talk to at night. Because that's true. That's, that's, right. that's why I come over to I'm your house. I'm crying. Yeah, so that's why. The, the, the whole point is... Everybody is sort of struggling, and we are, everybody's doing the best that they can. And um, what we want to put out there, say that word again, Co Co uh, cordial. cordial. Yeah, that's a, a, I chose that word because I liked it. That's all it, that is expected from people to be cordial and understanding mm -hmm, and allow you your space. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to be understanding to where you don't have to talk in a certain strange way. Mm -hmm. to a mental illness patient. Mm -hmm. um, we're people too. Mm -hmm. And we deserve the right to uh, work, to be happy, to be happy in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm kind of like, well, wishing that I wasn't in a relationship, but I am. But I f see... The relationship that I'm in right now, he's in a mental health too. And he just got out of jail because he's a drinker. Mm -hmm. And um, anyways... Uh, so we really don't have to go there, you know why? Because we're almost out of time. Hi, um, my name is Catherine Peel, and mm -hmm. Lillian invited me to make an, a summary opinion on uh, mental illness to sort of tie it together and make some sense of what Mona has shared with us today and she asked me for two reasons the first of which because I am an emotion counselor and I established a nonprofit organization on the, the study and education and uh, research into human emotion and secondly because I have a, a brother who I love dearly who also has been um, in the throes of mental illness um, diagnosed as both manic depressive and paranoid schizophrenic just like Mona um, certain catch-all phrases that they use for conditions that they don't really know what else to call um, my comment on all of that is that the medical model is different than my approach and my conclusions are a lot different as well and I think they offer quite a bit more hope but the medical model which um, all of mental illness is diagnosed by the guidelines within this uh, wonderful little book that tells us all about what a mental disorder is and everything in here boils down to uh, people with conditions of heightened sensory experience especially emotional experience and people that um, are having these experiences to the degree to that they can't function properly are often called mentally ill and they're put in hospitals and warehouses and given medication um, to either keep them off the streets or to make them so they can function in society. But it basically they're just manipulating the chemistry like putting a band-aid over a, a, a gaping wound without understanding what's really going on. So um, fortunately as science advances we've discovered a lot of really in interesting things about the human psyche. Um, so my approach is more like, and science is really coming along and the medical models are starting to shift is it's more like there's a continuum of the human condition and people with mental illness are basically just on the sensitive ends of a bell curve of normalcy so until we really understand what human wellness is and mental wellness we won't really be able to talk um, intelligently about mental illness so uh, my approach is more in looking at these people and recognizing the, um, the, that they have a heightened sensitivity and redefining kind of what normal really is and thinking more about the multi-dimensions of the self 
and it has